This is Prince Street, I'm Howie Khan, and I'm here with Ruthie Rogers at the Park Hyatt Hotel in New York City. Ruthie is the owner and chef of the River Cafe in London. Welcome, Ruthie. Oh, thanks. It's great to be here. Look great at this to have this incredible you. view. It is amazing. It's Something an amazing don't get in spring London. morning in New York City. It's also 27 degrees. Yeah, yeah, I know. We found out that yesterday. We came from Mexico and straight into this weather. So Ruthie's restaurant is is a legendary place in London. One of the great Italian <laughs> restaurants in the world. One of the great restaurants anywhere. I wanted to talk to her about you know the origins of the restaurant, and I wanted to talk to her about her role as a, as a, as a rule breaker in, in the culinary scene. How did you start this restaurant? What, what got into you to say, I'm, I'm going to do a restaurant this way, I'm going to break all these rules? I think um, what happened is that we were uh, two women, uh, Rose Gray, my partner, um, and myself. We found the site first because my husband is an architect and his, his, we came back from Paris where he was designing the Pompidou Center. And we knew that we wanted to have a different kind of life, that we didn't want to just get another office in London, and I was working with him at the time. So we found this fantastic site on the river in Hammersmith. And we thought we could kind of create a community there of architects, designers. Um, there was, it was disused warehouses, and a kind of oil um, depository there. So um, they transformed this site architecturally and made a big square in the middle that was green. And um, architects, designers, as I said, a varied group of people took space. And we always wanted somewhere to eat. And we, I was a passionate cook uh, when we lived in Paris. There was a small space there that could be space for uh, a kind of restaurant. Uh, applications came pouring in. And I remember we were skiing. And I said, the only thing worse then not having a place to eat would be to have a mediocre place to eat. Maybe I'll do it. Mm. And it kind of grew from that. I called Rose up right away. We both knew from the first day that we wanted to be Italian because Rose had lived and worked in Lucca for about um, two or three years with her family. And uh, my husband's whole family are Italian. They come from Florence. So we had a very Tuscan focus because of that. Our competition in those first days was a sandwich girl. Very, very slowly, um, word got out, and Faye Mashers, who writes for the Evening Standard, the first line of her review for the River Cafe was, I'm going to tell you about a restaurant you can't go to, yeah. because we weren't allowed to open to the public. Right. Those restrictions, though, very gradually lifted. Uh, the great leap was, I think, probably in 1993 or 94, when we actually really expanded the restaurant. I love to talk about your, your partnership with Rose and, and yeah. your work with her over the yeah. years because the, the story of this restaurant is very much about the two of you. Well, I've known Rose because she went to school with my husband. She came back to London. She decided that restaurants was what she wanted to do. And, you know, I called her up and I said, look, you know, let, meet me for a coffee. There's this site in Hammersmith. Should we go see it? And uh, we went together and we looked at it. It was tiny. It was probably about the size of this room. And uh, we looked at it and we said, let's do it. You, know? you didn't have to convince her at all. She wasn't Not skeptical. At all. She was really yeah. up for it. Yeah, yeah, she really was excited. When we started, as you say, it was, there were so many challenges. There were two women in the very man's world, uh, two unprofessional chefs starting a restaurant in a place that was out of the way. Nobody knew where it was. It seemed quite hard to get to. Um, now people come from all over. Uh, to London to get there, and it's, it isn't that far, but f in those days. And so I think the challenges there were, were pretty pretty high. And uh, she died five years ago, so um, there's still a lot of people who remember and talk about her. How is Rose's presence still felt in the restaurant every day? I say that. I say Rose is there every day. The greatest tribute that we can have to Rose is to, to get better and better, and I think we have. One of my favorite things about the River Cafe is is the room itself, the way it yeah. looks, the yeah. bright primary colors. Yeah, pinkwood oven. The pinkwood <laughs> oven that has now become an Instagram yeah. sensation. How did you decide to make it look that way? What we wanted it to be was open, so that the, the diner can see the drama in the restaurant that's going in the in the kitchen that's going on between the chefs and the other chefs, or the the chefs and the waiters. And then there's a drama between the waiter and the people they're serving. And then, as I said, there's a drama between, you know, the, the, the customers. So there's a lot of 
that going on, you know. So for us, we love the drama of everything being exposed. Out of all the <coughs> hundreds, the thousands of dishes you've probably put on the menu over the years, are there things you identify as the signature dishes of your restaurant? The chocolate nemesis. Chocolate uh, nemesis. Yeah, do you know that cake? That's, yeah, that's the Tell one that everybody that. loves. Everybody yeah. And so we've had that on the menu probably since 1989, and I don't think there's been a day when we haven't. The River Cafe is such an extraordinarily fun restaurant. I mm -hmm. wanted to know if you have any, any memories of a particularly fun or wild night. Yeah, well, we've had lots. I mean, as I said, the River Cafe, is, you know, like any other restaurant, is full of drama. You know, we've had the time that um, somebody asked us to write on, a, on um, a plate that had a cake on it, uh, will you marry me, because he was going to propose. And halfway through the meal, he came up and he said, cancel the cake, you know. <laughs> so we always wonder what happened to that, that dinner. Um, the time that we had um, Gwyneth Paltrow was asked if she could spend a day in the kitchen. The customers were just, they, they looked and they just kept saying, are we seeing what we're seeing? That's the kind of restaurant we are, where we, we, we reach out and we just will try and sort it out, you know, whatever it is. That's great. Ruthie, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. I've really enjoyed talking to you. See you soon.